I'm sewing this vintage 1950s pattern with this vintage cotton fabric with a perfect leaf print for fall. Now I've been saving this fabric for a while for the perfect dress. This project will feature some things that I don't do very often. Cutting the bodice on the bias, doing set-in sleeves on a dress, and lining the bodice. One of these decisions will lead to some regrets, but we'll get to that. But first, we have to figure out how to cut out the bodice with such a busy print, so let's do it. Let's talk about cutting out the bodice pieces on the bias with this very linear print. So my goal here is to chevron these stripes towards the center front and the center back. And I'd like to do this basically on the front bodice with one big stripe in the middle and it's going to be it's going to be a little bit different on the back because the neckline the v-neck is actually at a different angle so when these are both lined up it means that <laughs> on the back the placement of the chevron is going to be different than the front and that's okay but basically what i would like to do here is make this so that i have a pink line one of these thinner pink lines running up towards the v-neck on the front and I need to make sure that the lower pink line finishes above the waistline seam and the other thing that I'm looking for is so these pink lines they are not exactly the same width so no matter what I'm not going to get this perfectly matched up at the center front and the center back and that's fine but what I think I'm going to try and do is place this so that that center front and center back line don't hit in one of these little areas where one of these leaves or roses kind of eats into the pink line. Because I think that'll be weird because I'll end up with it on probably one side and then not the other side. And so I'm going to try and place this so that it falls just in a solid pink area for the seam line. And I think that there's a couple of places along this placing this about where I would like this wide stripe to be where that will work out for myself and then the other thing that I need to think through is not for the bodice but for the sleeve pieces so here is the sleeve piece and the way I'm going to place the front bodice I'm going to use the yellow stripe in the middle so it's predominantly red on the bottom and then a little bit of red on the top. I'll probably only have about an inch and a half before the neckline. And the color that is around the arm side on the front will be the yellow stripe. Now I can either, depending on how I lay out the sleeve piece, I can either have it so that the sleeve seam and sort of the last couple inches of the sleeve on either side fall in that yellow area so that would match the arm side on the bodice or I can have it so that the yellow is in the middle and I have to decide what I want. I think ideally I would like the red to run down the center of the sleeve because I think that means that it will read a little bit more red and overall my goal with this bodice the reason I want to run the yellow stripe down the middle is I think that it will probably read a little bit more red that way with the red at the bottom and the top because if I do it the other way and run the red down the middle then it's yellow at the bottom yellow at the top and I mock these both the red stripe down the middle or the yellow stripe down the middle in Photoshop which is a great way to get kind of an idea I'd never done that before and it was very helpful hey editor Tasha here so I basically made up as I went how to do this but it was really easy and I found it really helpful so if you'd like to learn how I did this let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do a tutorial sometime and I decided after much, 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 <laughs> much, much staring <laughs> that I like the yellow stripe marginally better. So that's what I'm going to go with. And I think I'm probably going to run the sleeve with the red stripe down the middle and the yellow off to the sides, which will then actually match the armhole and the bodice. So that is my plan. This will all be slightly different on the back because the angle is different from the front for the bodice because the neckline is shaped differently as you can kind of see here let me see actually if I if I line these up maybe you can kind of see the center front and center back line 
the neckline is different. So the, the grain for running this on the bodice actually follows the neckline. And so for the back, when I have a big stripe down the center, it's not gonna be, <laughs> it's not gonna match up to the front. And so I need to decide according to how I place the front bodice <laughs> where I will place the back. And I have not quite figured that out yet. I will probably broadly do something similar so that the yellow stripe goes down the center of the back, but I'd like at least for the majority of the shoulder to kind of hit in the same color. Although obviously, you know, it's a little hard to do that when there's lots of other color in there for the, the design elements, the rose and the uh, leaves. So a little bit to figure out still, but just thought I would share how I kind of sit and plot this out. And the few minutes of me talking here is probably 1% <laughs> of how long I'm gonna spend on thinking about this. Cause I could seriously just stand here and hem and haw about this for hours. <laughs> and yeah, I did spend a lot more time thinking this over before and during cutting. Cutting out always takes me a while when I'm working with a print that I'm trying to line up specifically, so this was no exception. But let me know if you want a tutorial on that sometime. Thankfully, with the two pieces of this fabric, I had enough for the bodice, sleeves, pockets, and belt on one piece, and the skirt on the other piece. Although I was a tiny bit shy on the belt, I wanted to run the belt through the red stripe, and I was about two inches short of the right length. So we'll see if I end up needing to piece the end or something. Wanted to show you what the bodice pieces look like after my hopefully careful cutting out. The chevron will form pretty nicely at the center front. And then the shoulders each have the pink upper line ending, not in exactly the same spot, but pretty close. And then the front of the armhole will be in the yellow stripe. And then we've got a nice big red stripe going down here and a little bit of peak of the yellow stripe at the bottom. I'm going to stay stitch now anything that is on the bias, which is the center front seam on the bodice. It's not the neckline because this is actually on the grain and I'll do the armholes too. Now I did cut out the lining pieces as well and I cut these on grain in part to help kind of stabilize the bias grain because I bias always makes me nervous. So this is actually cut out on the grain and then I omitted the center front seam on the front bodice. So I will stabilize the V-neck on this because on the lining piece, this is on the bias, but on the actual bodice shell pieces, this is on the straight grain. So I'm gonna do that next, but I'll also show you, I'll also show you the back. Now I do have these, the seam allowances folded in here for how I line this up, but you can see that the chevron shape is still formed on here, follows the grain line, even though the neckline is a little bit different. So the, this angle is different on the front and the back, but I think this is all going to look really, really nice. I'm very pleased with how this all cut out. And then I did, here I'll show you the sleeves too. I did decide to go with the red stripe down the center of the sleeve. So this will fold and each side will have a little bit of yellow at the armhole and I think hopefully this will look lovely. Since my lining fabric is white, I actually decided to stay stitch the lining as well as sew the darts and the shoulder seams before moving on to my fashion fabric since it meant less times I needed to change thread color. And once the bodice lining was prepped, I stay stitched the bias seams of the bodice pieces of my fashion fabric. I used my walking foot since I didn't want to accidentally stretch it. I also pinned and sewed all the darts and side seam pocket pieces to the skirt pieces before sewing. And one last thing before I batch sewed all those seams, because the sleeve will have a very narrow hem, I pressed those two folds up since it'll be way easier for me to sew the hem after the sleeve is in a tube, having done that prep work. One quick checkpoint on my bodice as I am sewing this. So I want to make sure that my stripes have lined up pretty decently on the center front seam because obviously that is a very visible seam. So I baste it just inside the seam line to see if I think that this is all lining up correctly to see if I need to fudge anything. And so I am not expecting these pink bars of the stripe to line up perfectly because they are not, they are not perfectly even size. 
but I actually, I think that looks pretty good. And then let's see the bottom one and yeah, I, I'm liking that. I think that's pretty good considering how different and variable those pink stripes are. I think this is going to look really good. So I can keep going. I was pleased with the center front seam chevroning, so I continued along, sewing and pressing everything I'd prepped so far, as well as sewing my bodice shoulder seams, attaching the bodice to the lining at the neckline, and sewing the side seams for the bodice and lining separately. Meanwhile, I was thinking about the next construction steps of the bodice and lining. Isn't this looking really nice? So this pattern calls for facings and not a fully lined bodice which is what I'm obviously doing here. Now, I more typically use a version of this bodice that I redrafted quite a while ago to have cut on sleeves like this version. But I'm going with the original set in sleeves of this pattern, and I've done this before, but it's been about six years. So I'm gonna take a cue from the Christine Haynes Emery dress pattern where she lines the bodice fully, but she treats the fashion fabric and the lining fabric as one at the armholes for the set-in sleeve. And that's actually a really similar concept to how the lining is treated in the 1940s halter dress pattern that I made this summer. I'll link to that video in the description. So in this case, I've treated the lining as a normal lining at the neckline and attached it to the bodice. And I've kept the lining fabric separate at the side seams, again, which you would do for normal lining. But I'm going to then baste together the lining fabric and the bodice fabric at the armhole. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't know, you don't need any help making setting in sleeves more annoying. <laughs> so being able to treat those fabrics together as one, having them already basted together when I set this in, will be a lot easier. And as you can see, I've actually already hemmed these sleeves with my little narrow hem that I pressed up earlier. And I just did this by hand. And that makes it so much easier than hemming them after I've set the sleeves in. So now I just need to set in the sleeves, which I hate doing, by the way. So you probably know by now that I often try to figure out how I can best batch things together when sewing. And after I basted the armholes, I realized I wanted to change thread colors in order to do the gathering stitches on the sleeve caps, since it's a lot of red thread to compete with the stay stitching and basting of the armholes. And if I was going to do that, it made sense to gather the skirt at the same time. But in order to do that, I needed to actually sew the skirt side seams. And then I was able to get all of my gathering basting stitching out of the way and switch back to my normal thread color to set the sleeves in. Was this all a ruse to procrastinate setting the sleeves in just a little bit longer? Maybe. Because I just detest setting in sleeves in smooth cotton fabric. It's so unforgiving. And vintage patterns sometimes have a little bit too much ease in the sleeve cap already, which makes it even more difficult to ease them into the arm side. I actually had to step away from these in a huff more than once. God, what a pain. I don't even like wearing set in sleeves and woven fabrics very much, but here we are. I'm living with the choices I made. But I finally made it there. I made it there <laughs> with the lining and the bodice fabric treated as one when I set in and finished those sleeves. And <laughs> the, the big irony here is with all of my trying to assess how to place this print on the bodice and the sleeves, I did decide to have the red stripe running down the center of the sleeves, as I told you. But due to where these little roses end up, kind of looks like <laughs> one sleeve is more red and one sleeve is more yellow. Oh well, we'll just call that a design element. So now next up is attaching the skirt to the bodice and then doing the zipper. My waistline seam is now done and this is looking gorgeous. And I have my zipper inserted as well. And all I have left now is hand stitching the lining and the hem. 
the lining is free at the waistline seam and at the center back. So I will basically tack this down by hand to the zipper tape on both sides. And then I will fold up the seam allowance for the waistline seam. And I will tack it to the skirt waistline and it will entirely enclose my waistline seam. So I didn't bother finishing that other than pressing it up and trimming it. And then the bodice will be fully lined and my dress will be ready to go after I get the hem done. And oh yeah, one more step, gotta finish off my belt as well. And you can watch my belt making tutorial. I'll link that video in the description. And just some hand sewing left, like closing up the lining for the bodice and then this dress will be done. Okay, so I love how this dress looks and how the pattern placement turned out on the bodice on the front and the back. It really is the perfect vintage dress for fall and it was a great project to save this vintage fabric for. It's just such a delightful print and I think the chevroning on the bodice in contrast to the vertical stripes on the skirt are just a really nice look. And it goes so nicely with this confident bolero. This is one of my vintage inspired knitting patterns, by the way. I'll link to where you can buy the pattern in the description. But here's my only regret with this dress. I wish I hadn't done the set in sleeves. I've sewed this pattern several times, including one version only with the set in sleeves, and that was the very first version that I ever sewed. The rest I've used my drafted cut on sleeve variation, including the one that I wore in the beginning of this video. Did I try on any of those before launching into this dress project? No, not even the one with the set-in sleeves. I find most set-in sleeves and woven cottons like this annoying to wear, which I even told you while I was sewing this dress. But somehow I thought that they would be better for fall. I don't really know why, given that some of my favorite versions of this dress pattern are in fall fabrics and they have a similar length cut on sleeve. Plus, if I'd bothered to try on my previous version with set in sleeves, I would have remembered that the bodice is a little bit short, which looks fine, but it feels kind of annoying to wear. I could have solved all of this by just not sewing the version of the pattern with set in sleeves, and that's exactly what I'll do next time. Thankfully, those annoyances don't make it any less beautiful of a dress, they just make it a little bit annoying to wear. Speaking of set in sleeves, if you'd like to see me convert a set in sleeve pattern to a cut on sleeve, try watching this video right here. And if you'd like to watch me make a plaid jumper where I don't have to worry about sleeves at all, try this video. Until next time, happy sewing. But not if it's set in sleeves. Never if it's set in sleeves.